Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and the subject of today's video, well we're going to be talking about design of experiments and I'm going to be answering a question that I've got. I think it's from a university student but I'm not absolutely certain. They're asking questions about which DOE to do and the easiest way to give them an answer is to make this video. So what we're talking about Let's just put some details up here. Which DOE are we going to use? Now, the person that sent this in, they're telling me that they have three variables, three inputs. Uh, they said time, temperature and acid ratio is what they told me. Okay, so there are the three variables. And at the moment, what they've been looking at is they've been looking at a three factor, three level experiment, and they found a Toguchi They found a Taguchi L27. Now that requires 27 setups, 27 uh, different setups in the process. You're gonna replicate that at least once. So you're gonna need 54 data points to do that. So would that be my choice? Absolutely not. So here's some things to think about when you're choosing your DOE. So the first thing is Why are you choosing a three level experiment? That's partly what makes the experiment so long to conduct. So my advice here would be actually to choose a two level experiment, but the three level look, why do you choose it? You test at a low point, you test at a high point. And normally what we do is we fill that in then with a straight line. So two level. Now if I do two level here, I only have to do eight setups. And if I repeat them four times, I end up with just 32 pieces. So much better. And the four time repetition gives me much more information about the variability in this process. So for me, that's a much better way to go. Now three level, why would you test three level? Well, of course, what you're scared of is that the relationship is not a straight line. That the relationship is curved. Okay, so that's why you pick three level. But I'm still gonna say pick two level, so here's why. You pick two level, you test here and you test here, and then there's only eight tests. Then what you have to do, of course, you create a linear model. But then you have to prove that it's linear and you do what's known as A confirmation test. Where do you do the confirmation test? At the midpoint. In other words, you're trying to pick up either this point here or of course this point here. But you're gonna set time, temperature and acid ratio to their mid values. So this data point gets created by the confirmation test. And of course, if you hit the point you predict, because what you're going to do is you're going to make a prediction. And then you're going to see if you can hit it. If you hit it, it's a linear model. You don't need to worry anymore. Eight tests done. What happens if I don't hit the middle? Well, now what you're going to do, you're going to take your eight tests, 
you're going to take your confirmation points and you're going to add some additional data to them. The, the, the DOE that we're going to use is a central composite face design. You will find central composite on the response surface menu in Minitab. Okay, so the original uh, two level, so you're just going to do a full factorial, a two to the three full factorial would be DOE1. Then you do the confirmation point. If the confirmation point doesn't work, then you augment it into the central composite. What does augment mean? Well, you've got the original data from the two to the three. You've got the confirmation data as well. And then what you do to finish it off You add some more data. All of that makes a central composite face design. If you do that, then you, you've done the three level DOE because you had to. Here, you could do a three level DOE here. It might be linear and you've wasted all your effort. So what we do is we augment into three level. We start two level. We prove that it's a straight line or not. If it's not, we add some additional data and we analyze the whole block of our efforts as one big experiment. And it's known as the central composite face design. But that's the DOE I would do. A key point, by the way, is making sure that your design space for these three variables you're going to test three variables so one's going to be time here one's going to be temp one's going to be ratio now you need to make sure that that design space is nice and big so go high and low on the time high and low on the temp high and low on the acid ratio avoid trying to find a design space which you think where is where the answer lies. So if you try and guess this and you have a tiny little design space, what do you get? You get no signals and you get no knowledge. If you make the design space nice and big, by the way, it's still got to produce at these corner points. You're going to be testing at the eight corner points it's still got to produce products. So if the machine doesn't work when you go out too wide, that's, that is too wide. But you want to get the design space nice and big so that you get signals in your data and you learn knowledge. And if the real answer is somewhere in that little blue box, well, the maths will put you in that little blue box eventually anyway. But if the real answer is here and you didn't collect the data here, well, you won't know. You're not collecting enough knowledge if you don't open the design space up. So I hope that answers your question. There's an awful lot of stuff in the video there that would have taken me about 25 pages in an email. So if you need any more help, please drop me a line. I'm more than happy to help you with the central composite face design and how to augment that up. But I would start with a full factorial, two to the three, two level, DOE and do a confirmation test.